and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how to model a basic hand in Blender. Now, in this tutorial, I'm only going to be really focusing on the initial making of the basis of the hand and not the detailing phase. So with the end model, you would either use it as is, or you would use it as a basis and move on to a more high detail pass in something like Sculptress, ZBrush, or even Blender's inbuilt sculpting tool. But before we continue any further, I would just like to point out that if you haven't already, please visit my site and check it out. We also have a new tutorial section. In this section here, I'm quite proud of it. It works almost like a news website, but you've got just all tutorials from different softwares. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, to start off, we're actually gonna keep the cube. I know, groundbreaking stuff this is. I'm gonna go into edit mode, and then I'm just gonna scale down by pressing S, and then I'm gonna constrain it to the Z axis. Now you, see, you can see whenever I scale, I'm scaling only on the Z axis, which is a good feature. So I'm gonna scale it so that it's pretty short, and then I'm gonna go into the top orthographic view so I'm able to get a better view of what's actually happening here. And while I'm in this top orthographic view, I wanna press Z so I'm able to see my wireframe, which will also mean that I'm able to select vertices behind other vertices. See, if I was just in my normal view mode and I use my box select tool and I grab these two vertices here, naturally I'd be thinking, hey, well, the vertices beneath them will be selected, but no, they're not. But if I am in a wireframe mode and I grab these vertices here, now, because it's in wireframe mode, I'm able to select the vertices on the other side of the mesh, the vertices that are occluded. And so just think of it as, like if I can see through the mesh, I can select through it. It's a really simple way of thinking about it. Next, I'm just going to scale these on the X axis so that we've got a bit of a sort of fanning shape for our cube. Because if you look at your hand, you'll see that the wrist part is actually a lot thinner than the top part and our hand actually splays out a little bit. So we wanna keep that splaying motion. After that, I'm gonna create two loop cuts in between by pressing Control R and then rotating my mouse wheel up. And then I'm gonna grab these and then move them up in Z space. Now when I say Z space in Blender, if you're coming from another program, Z space is up, which is a bit weird. And Y space is Z space in a lot of other programs. Okay, so we've got our basic shape pretty much ready. So this is the basic sort of hand shape. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this loop here, move it over. And this loop here, move it over in the Z. And just create another loop. And then I'm just gonna lift that up a little bit too. So this is just gonna give us some space for our fingers. No, I'm not happy with that. So another thing that we can do to actually make our life easier, if we wanna move these vertices along the sort of normal of it, we can press G twice, so double G. And now it should move roughly along the normal that we've got set for it. So I'm gonna do that for that too, just space it out so that our four little boxes at the front, which are gonna become our fingers, are roughly even. Okay, excellent. Now, I'm gonna come up here and go into our face select mode, and I'm going to just select these faces, duplicate, press G and move them in Y space, and now I'm gonna press spacebar and search for edge split. Excellent, so now I've selected edge split, all of these edges are gonna be disconnected. 
So I can actually move these independent of one another, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to select all these again by pressing L and I'm going to change the pivot point to individual origins and scale them on their individual origins just a little bit, just so they're separated. And then I'm going to change that back to meeting point. Okay. In our top view now, I'm going to extrude them. <clears throat> Excellent. And now I'm just going to splay them out a little bit. So I'm going to splay this one out. Kind of make sure that it's that it's um that the face is somewhat facing the normal. Don't have to be this part does not have to be perfect. You're just blocking it out. And then I'm gonna keep that roughly the same as it is. And we're this one bring it down a little bit because it's our pinky so this is going to be a left hand excellent okay next what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on each individual finger just going to grab an entire digit and I'm just going to shift D, duplicate it, and bring it out in space. Next, I'm just going to grab the most forward facing face and scale it down a little bit to kind of simulate a gradual tapering of the finger. And I'm going to also bring it up in Z space just a little bit because if you flay out your hands, you'll see that our fingers kind of curve upwards and they're more or less. I wouldn't say straight because no part of any organic body is straight per se, but it's more or less straight. Okay, excellent. And then I'm going to grab it again. And I'm just going to drag that out. And I'm going to scale that down. And let's just drag that up a little bit just so it's somewhat even and it's okay, it's looking good. Then I'm going to do the same for all of these fingers. So <clears throat> I will do a little time lapse here. Okay, now that we've done that, what we really want to do is we want to clean up these sort of edge fingers here because of our curve that we started with. It's kind of, they kind of mess up the later digits. So we're just going to grab the vertices on the side here and we're just going to drag them a little bit up as so. And then we're just going to make sure that there's a sort of blending sort of taper. So we want to do that for all the bottom and for the top. Oops. Doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to make sure that all of our digits somewhat end up as a, uh, a square, more or less. So we're just going to manually blend these, these shapes together. I'll also do it for the forefinger. Just bring those up a little bit. Blend. And there we go. A bit of monotonous work, but it does make our fingers look a lot better. But there we have it. There we have our four basic fingers 
uh, done, so we're ready to move on to the thumb. So we've got our forefinger, middle finger, ring finger, and our pinky. All done. So the thumb, it's roughly the same, to be honest. So the thumb sort of situates here. Think of it sitting on a ball, almost. So if we grab a sphere here, and we just scale that down as such, and then move it in here like this, it'll kind of give us a great basis to begin modeling our thumb. And I'm just gonna drag that down and kind of, whoops, rotate it so that it's somewhat aligning with the flow of our curve. Now, to begin, just going to grab one of these digits here, bring it across, I'm going to rotate it maybe on its uh, Y axis by 90 degrees, I don't know, 180. That's good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into wireframe mode, press C for our selection tool and drag those points just so that our thumbs begins to get like this sort of triangular look. And I'm going to bring this here. Oops. And I'm going to bring there. And then I'm going to make a loop cut in the thumb right here. I'm going to rotate a little bit. And we want to bring this out just a little bit. There we go. Oops. Easy. Let's just line that up into the sphere as such. Now the sphere you can keep if you're going to go on to sculpt, let's say, and you would merge all these meshes together. Uh, I'm just using it to just draft out where my thumb's going. I find that it helps to sometimes put some primitives in just to get an idea of how everything should be working together. Okay, excellent. Got our uh, first part of our thumb done. Just gonna come over here, duplicate that little face and increase it. And we're just going to now grab this edge here, kind of bring it in like so. And then I can just taper off the edge as such. Because our thumb, because it's empty and what is it, omnidextrous, I believe the word is, it's able to cross over and that's why instead of it being tapered on the Z axis, it's tapered on the X axis. So and also, you know, if you ever get lost while modeling this thing, just look at your own hand. You have one, I presume. Um, and yeah, it's a good reference. Just look up hands. <laughs> That's the great thing about modeling body parts is we all have them. So we all have a good reference to go off most of the time. And then from this point here, it's all about just cleaning up our points making sure that they look good, making sure that they seem natural. So for example, my thumb here, uh, especially towards the back, it doesn't seem natural because if you look at your own thumb, you'll see that it should splay and somewhat connect to this part of our palm or our hand here. So to replicate that, I'm just gonna hide that and I'm just gonna drag those two points as such. Okay, excellent. 
Now, it's just the cleanup phase, making sure that all of our points are you know, where we want them. So I'm going to save this here now. Excellent. So this is sort of our basic hand that we're, we've created. So now that we have our basic hand, we can actually create different poses for it. So I'm going to duplicate the hand. And now I'm going to go into edit mode. So if I grab all of our, my digits here, let's go to face. And then I just put my cursor here and rotate around the cursor. It makes for a quick and easy way to simulate sort of a, a bone or armature system without having one. So you can see, you know, it's quite intuitive, this method. So all that we're doing is we're changing the pivot point to the 3D cursor and replacing the 3D cursor in between the joints and then we're rotating. Just be sure to select the um, hierarchical order of our digits. But yeah, as you can see, by doing this, we can come up with some interesting shapes and it's just great for prototyping shapes, especially if you're going on to sculpting this thing, let's say and then you would be able to connect into the forearm and things like that. And then you would have a base mesh. So yeah, at this point here, you would be pretty much done with this hand unless you wanted to connect all the digits. Uh, if you did, uh, you'd be quite simple. It would just be all about connecting these digits here first. So I'll show you. We would come in here and we would just have our face select tool, select all these faces, press X to delete and only faces and then we'll just do that for all the faces now so i'm just showing you this little bit extra thing on how to combine all of our fingers so that they're one mesh now what we would do is we're going to connect our fingers together to the palm of the hand by going around the edge and using our vertices and then using the F button to fill with a face. Make sure that you're selecting four vertices so that you're ending up with quads rather than some other polygon. So I'll show you on one finger. So we grab all our vertices and press F to fill it. Next for these ones, these are the simple ones. So we just grab those two, press spacebar and do and search up loop bridge bridge edge loops. That's it. So we just bridge the edge loops. It's hard to keep track of all the um, functions in Blender. And then you'd be able to do it like that. And then you could just... But yeah, that's how we would connect our fingers together. Our, what are they called? Phalanges. And I hope that you have found this tutorial useful and informative. If you have, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that bell button to be notified upon a video's release. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.